Collecting action figures of any kind can be hugely enjoyable, but there are also a number of challenges and drawbacks that you need to be aware of. And these pros and cons are even more applicable when it comes to collecting toys that are sealed in original boxes or collecting figures that are sealed on original cards. A decade ago, I used to collect a mixture of both loose toys and packaged items, but once I started the Analog Toys YouTube channel in 2016, my focus noticeably shifted to primarily collecting loose action figures, as sealed toys do not lend themselves to being very useful for video production. While I still enjoy and appreciate original packaging designs and artwork, I have mostly steered clear of sealed toys for the past seven years. But everything changed in that department when I went to this year's Joe Fest Toy and Comic Convention. And there were two reasons for this change. The first was that Valiverse had teamed up with Stan Solo Creations to produce this amazing retro-inspired Action Force Desert Rad figure as one of their Joe Fest exclusives for 2023. And while numbers are limited, the remaining stock of these figures are now available on the Valiverse website, so head over to valiverse.com and secure your own piece of Action Force history today. The second reason was at the very same convention, I acquired one of the biggest toy scores of my entire life. Call it fate, call it luck, call it karma. It was incredibly serendipitous that I would pick up an amazing selection of vintage carded Palatoy Action Force figures at the same show where I was helping Valiverse promote their own vintage inspired carded Action Force figure. But it must have been destiny. And this score has now sent me down a carded Action Force collecting rabbit hole. But is it worth collecting carded Action Force figures? In some respects, this line is much easier and more enjoyable to collect than other similar lines of the same era, yet it is not without its pitfalls. So in this video, I'm going to go over the pros and cons of collecting carded Palatoy Action Force. Stay tuned. Come with me, toy fans. Hey toy fans, my name is Tony and welcome back to the Analog Toys YouTube channel. First things first, it's only really worth collecting vintage carded Action Force figures if you enjoy the toy line. And while I've said many times that people shouldn't collect toys for investment purposes, I will be touching on values on this video and how they relate to the prices demanded for other action figure lines also released in the early 1980s. But before we get into that, let me explain the main different categories of carded Action Force figures. The first series figures from 1982 are some of the most desirable in the line, and the cardbacks are produced in the same size and style as carded Star Wars figures. The figures and accessories are secured to the card via a plastic bubble, and the branding features the iconic yellow logo on a red backdrop. The back of the card features a cross cell showing other figures and vehicles available in the range, and the side panel on the front of the card has an image of eight of the nine original single carded Action Force figures. All of the first series figures have this artwork on the front of the card, with the figure's name printed inside the white stripe, and this is the only way to differentiate card backs from series one. It's worth noting that the figures photographed for this image are the original prototypes and not the actual production figures, and the easiest way to tell is by the colors used on the ground assault camouflage pattern. Something quite unique to Palatoy Action Force is that they also offered larger deluxe card backs for a select few of their figures, such as the US Paratrooper, the Mountain and Arctic, and the SAS Boat Patrol. And these look great in a collection, but if you enjoy displaying your carded figures in acrylic cases like I do, you need to be aware that finding cases to fit these card backs is not easy. One of the deluxe cards that I would really like to own is the Mountain and Arctic, because I have a fond memory of my parents gifting me this toy when I worked from a surgery when I was around five years old. In fact, right now, the carded Mountain and Arctic set is probably my most wanted Holy Grail item. And if any of you have a line on where I might be able to get one, shoot me an email at torturedgeniusfilms at gmail.com. I've got cash waiting for you. In 1983, Palatoy moved away from the concept of Action Force simply being scaled down mini versions of Action Man, and they introduced the different teams. The Space Force, the Z Force, the Q Force, and the SAS. And to coincide with the release of these figures, they did away with the image on the front of the card back, and replaced it with the various team logos. During this period, action figures weren't the only items offered by Palatoy on card backs, and you can change up the look of your display by also collecting some of the battle gear sets that provided a host of extra weapons and equipment for your Action Force troops. These pieces blend seamlessly with the other carded figures due to the fact that the backing cards are made to the exact same shape and design. Finally, in 1985, all of the original Palatoy designed 5 POA figures were dropped from the line and were replaced with G.I. Joe figures imported from Hasbro. 
and these releases featured the character's file card on the front instead of a photo or logo. If you do some online research, you'll quickly realize that the prices commanded for different figures varies wildly. And this is due to a combination of rarity, desirability, and condition. So let's tackle each of these factors individually. The two rarest carded figures from the original series are the Australian Jungle Fighter and the Desert Rat. And I've heard from experts in the Action Man community that there are less than 10 carded examples of each of these figures left in existence. So while this does make these figures extremely difficult to acquire, when they do turn up, you can still obtain them for less than £1,000 each. And I think this is one of the major upsides to collecting carded Palatoy Action Force. These two figures are infinitely rarer than carded Star Wars Yak Face figures, or even carded Vinyl Cape Jowers, and yet they won't hurt your wallet to anywhere near the same degree. A quick search on eBay has revealed no less than four carded Vinyl Cape Jowers for sale right now, with numerous carded Yak Face figures also being offered. And yet there are no carded Australian Jungle Fighters or Desert Rats currently available, and none have been sold on that platform in the past 90 days. I would much rather own a genuinely rare figure like this for less than a thousand pounds than a Star Wars Yak Face that's worth three times the price because of an overinflated market. I understand that while paying a thousand pounds for a carded action figure is a much easier pill to swallow than paying 15 grand, it is still outside the range of affordability for a lot of people. However, you can purchase the vintage inspired Desert Rat figure from the Valiverse website for only $29.99 with loose examples also available for $19.99. As previously mentioned, these figures have been produced in very limited numbers, and if any of you watched my video about the prices of Stan Solo figures skyrocketing when the figures are no longer available, then you'll already know that you don't want to miss out on this opportunity to acquire a retro-styled carded Action Force figure for such an amazing price. Many of the 1985 repackaged G.I. Joe figures also command high prices due to how few of them have survived in decent sealed condition. But I have steered clear of collecting these figures because if I did, I'd prefer to acquire them on the original Hasbro card backs, as the artwork makes the packaging far more dynamic and displayable. The popularity of certain characters will always drive up the value of carded figures. This is why carded examples of G.I. Joe characters such as Snake Eyes and Storm Shadow command higher prices than other figures released during the same year, and why Star Wars collectors often talk about having to pay a Boba Fett tax, and this factor also applies to collecting carded Action Force figures. Collectors must pay a premium for key characters such as the main villain Baron Ironblood, because people consider him to be far more essential to their collections than many of the other figures in the range. But this goes both ways, and that's why carded Moutons can be picked up for practically peanuts. The Mouton is one of the easiest to find carded figures, a bit like the Action Force version of Klaatu. But he's also not very popular, and I've seen entire shipping cases full of Moutons being sold for just a couple of hundred dollars. Another figure in high demand is the carded Red Shadow, because this is the main enemy troop builder of the line, and just like the Star Wars Stormtrooper, collectors want multiple examples. The Kraken is a fan favourite action figure from this line that is also extremely desirable because in the UK this figure was a mail away exclusive and he was only sold on a card back in certain European countries. So these carded figures tick both the rarity and desirability boxes. When collecting any type of carded toys, condition is everything and collectors will always pay a premium for high end items. And this is one of the major drawbacks of collecting carded Palatoy Action Force, because the plastic used in the manufacture of the bubbles is inferior to what was used on Kenner Star Wars figures, and the bubbles can be easily dented. In fact, Action Force bubbles are very similar to the ones used on Tri-Logo Star Wars cardbacks, and they are notorious for being much easier to damage than the bubbles provided on the Kenner cardbacks. The Action Force cardbacks, however, are made from a good quality cardstock, so provided they have been stored correctly, they generally survive in pretty decent condition. And you'll never find better condition action figures than ones that have never been removed from the original packaging. Another factor that you must seriously consider before deciding to collect this line is where you're located in the world. Palatoy Action Force was only sold in the United Kingdom and Europe, and therefore that is where most of these toys come up for sale. So if you live in the United States, or in Australia like I do, then you must be prepared to swallow a lot of shipping costs if you want to collect this line. 
When Valiverse decided to produce this vintage-inspired Desert Rat figure to commemorate the rich history of the Action Force brand, they chose to collaborate with Stan Solo Creations, as this company is widely regarded among collectors as the best manufacturer of retro-styled action figures available on the market today. The card back is very faithful to the original design, and the lettering on the Action Force logo has been updated to match the one used on the very popular range of 1-12 to scaled Action Force figures currently being produced by Valiverse. On the back of the card is a mysterious cross-cell image that features two blacked out characters. And this reminds me of when Kenner did the same thing on early Return of the Jedi cards, so they wouldn't spoil new character reveals for the movie. The bottom half of the card back is devoted to Desert Rat's file card. And while the text is the same as the one that appeared on the 6 inch figure box, this time the artwork has been created by Quinton J. Bedwell. The side panel on the front features the modern Action Force logo, and where many of the vintage cards included a star call out that was used to advertise the comics or tell children to collect them all, for this updated version the space was used to house Desert Rat's autograph, with each individual card being personally signed by me, the real Desert Rat. The actual figure features that distinctive Palatoy sculpting style, and the weapon is a supremely accurate scaled down representation of the rifle that came with the 6 inch figure. And it's a ton of fun displaying this desert rat in the AF3 Special Patrol Vehicle, or in the turret of the Z Force ATC, or if you want to be really cheeky, you can have him hijack the infamous Robo Skull. So whether you want to add this figure to your existing Palatoy collection, or simply have it as a standalone item to commemorate the history of the brand, there is a space for the vintage carded Desert Rat in every Action Force collection, and you can purchase yours today from Valiverse.com. So is it worth collecting vintage carded Palatoy Action Force? I certainly think so. Compared with a lot of other action figure lines from the early 1980s, Action Force is definitely more affordable, and the diversity of colour and character design, especially of the first series figures, makes them look great on display. While there is a quite large number of different figures to collect, making a complete run a very daunting challenge, you can easily make this more achievable by reducing the scope of what you collect. As an example, you could simply choose to collect a single team, such as the SAS, or like me, you could choose to simply complete the first series run. I now have seven of the first nine carded figures available, and I only need the Mission Pilot and the Ground Assault to complete this set. Although I do also want to add those gorgeous deluxe cards for the US Paratrooper and the Mountain and Arctic. And even though that is going to be very, very challenging, that's the whole point of collecting in the first place. It's the fun of the hunt. So thank you all for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, you can click the links up here to check out some or other Action Force content. Or subscribe to the channel by clicking here, or consider supporting us on Patreon, where you'll get access to hours of exclusive content. I'm Tony from Analog Toys, and I'll see you in the next video.